Greetings, listeners. I am your host and game master this evening, Zach Barrett, and welcome to this Twisted Gear Studios production of Spacers, our Starfinder actual playcast. Last we left the crew, Cliptic went to the station's local bar to cope with the dark behavior that he has been giving into. Having tried a near lethal dose of Vibraxium, the crew gathers themselves and Clip before moving on and returning to Purgatory. Fine spacers, as it were. <laughs> I said the title, that's it, credits, we're done. Is that um, what we're calling us? Because that's not what I would be calling We're in space. Oh, now. you're in space and you're spacing out. You're double spacer. Whoa! We're last, space spacers. Last uh, we all gathered, you had followed Joe Vax's most recent coordinates to a planet that was uh, covered in a toxic atmosphere and uh, met with some rather powerful psionic. Drow, this uh, woman that uh, named herself the Matriarch, or called herself the Matriarch. Cliptic had a very, very negative reaction to this woman. In yes. fact, very specifically referring to her as, um, uncharacteristically, a bitch. <laughs> and, um, however, you also acquired a stowaway, another Sheeran, the same species as Cliptic. This Sheeran, however, uh, claimed that it was, uh, Sloth, or at least Sloth's uh, rewards to Jovak when Jovak conquered Sloth's armies back in uh, when he was free to roam around and conquer the Seven. You, you had him locked up when he announced himself as such. He was vilely wounded. He was pretty messed up from whatever experiments the Matriarch was doing on the planet. Uh, this did not, however, stop Cliptic from wanting to ask him several questions, which he was pretty forthcoming uh, with. Even before Cliptic started torturing him. Ah. And then Cliptic started torturing him. Ah. You dick. Anyway, so... <laughs> I get it. <laughs> <laughs> the most recent uh, attempt of, uh, of, of, of uh, torturing poor, uh, poor Sloth. Poor, though, uh, really. Well, he was kind of a dick. Um... In the most recent meeting between Cliptic and Sloth, Cliptic communed mentally with him to acquire some information, but the two-way connection allowed him to visualize Jovak being alive and in jail on uh, Purgatory. As such, uh, with a couple of creepy words from Sloth, Cliptic tried to kill him, but with, with some restraint, merely singed him instead and to rid himself of the pain mentally of, of what he's done and being a pretty evil person uh, he went to a bar at the station that you were currently docked at with the heap and got drunk off of liquor that the bartender recommended he not to touch and you all picked his poisoned carcass up and carried it back to the ship what was, so, the, what was the drink I Drunk again? Vibraxium. It is apparently a delicacy of some species, but is pretty much murderous to Sheeran. <clears throat> and or you really just said it the hardest. All that much smaller than a Vesk. The what? It's 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 pretty murderous to anything that's much smaller than a Vesk. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. It's a it's a Vesk liquor. So anyway, that having been said, so we begin uh, our adventure the next morning after the bar has been concluded. Um, as well, one other fun fact of things that happened last session was that Laurel, you went and had a meeting with the captain, mm -hmm. uh, Captain Argus, about possibly helping you guys take your prisoner sloth to purgatory using the inaugural heap. She, you know, rather was okay with the concept and was willing to take you there when you were ready. So... We're starting off this next day. What are you guys doing on the next day on uh, the heap? Again, you have like shared quarters that are actually really nice on the heap, and then your shared bunk area on the meteor is actually uh, kind of poopy. Am I even conscious? I don't know. Roll a constitution uh, check. Yeah. Roll a 42 taming for, throw for me. And what am I adding to it? Sorry. Your fortitude saving throw. Well, I rolled a natural 19 on the die. Okay, well, that's not bad. I'll just say that you know, obviously sure. you have more than... You wake up, you have a splitting headache. Yeah. Okay. Um, but with a couple glasses of water, you're not so much feeling the effects of it, and you're stabilized from the ever-coursing poison in your bloodstream. However, you do still suffer the negative penalties of being constitutionally poisoned yep. until some medical practitioner other than yourself is able to actually, you know, basically pump your entire, like blood system 
And if I didn't have, if I didn't go to help, would it dissipate, or am I just like poisoned until I get help? No, nah, it'll it'll work its way out of your system, but it'll take a while. Okay, all right, yeah. I see. Yeah, I'm not gonna like kill you because I rolled a natural one. That sucks. <laughs> I mean, I take my natural one seriously, but that's that's messed up. <laughs> okay, fair enough. However, so just just remember that uh, poisons uh, stack. So if you run into a situation where you're going to get another layer of constitutional poison, it will stack on top of the poison you currently have. Ah. After so many stacks of a characteristic poison, okay. you will just die. <laughs> no rolls, just die. Okay. Now that's so if you get like a dexterity poison, it's its own separate stack, but the same characteristics poison will just kill you. Uh, so yeah. So now that you know that you're conscious, what are you going to do? Uh, I am walking, so I'm going to probably do what everyone does in every drinking movie possible. Probably have one hand clutching my head, the other one bracing myself against a wall, heading out. And I'm sorry, we're we're on the. Would ship? you guys have put Cliptic on the in one of the beds on the heap or one of on the, the hammocks on the meteorite? On the heap. On the heap. heap. Okay, okay, so, so we're on a nice the heap. bed. Oh, okay. So Actually roll a perception check. I just want to see if this is a joke I can pull off right now. Oh god. Uh that is a sixteen plus perception, which is oh plus eight. So minus two because of things. Oh yeah, so. minus two. Yeah, that's right. So it's no eight. Four. So then that would be twenty-two. So I have this um, most of this bunk is is like this room. It's shared beds. Uh, most of it's vacant. Whoever else sleeps in here has left. But there is a curtain drawn over one of the beds, and you hear like faint sobbing. Sobbing. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Very very faint. <clears throat> it's not like open weeping. Uh, is there any like <laughs> what would be a, a glass of water anywhere? You can go and get a glass of water. No, I don't want to leave the room. Okay, so I'll guess... Probably thinking that I must be hearing things, but I'm going to check it out anyway. I'm going to go check out what's behind curtain number one. You just pull up the curtain? <clears throat> uh, I'll probably... Hello? Uh, hey, uh, hello? Um, yeah, 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 yep, yep. Uh, can I help you? Can... Are you okay? No, oh, I'm... Uh, I'm fine. I'm going to open the curtain. I swing and open the curtain, and there's this uh, uh, stubble-covered uh, halfling that's just sitting there, and he's got his knees curled up to his chest. He's like, oh, sorry, my my shift doesn't start yet, so I was just kind of hanging out in my, in my bunk for a bit. It sounded like you were crying. What? What? You know? No, you were crying. He wipes his, his face a little bit. Who are you? I haven't seen you much here before. You used to work in the kitchen. You work with Chef Blue? I, I, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to remember, oh. yes. Uh, yes, how, how, uh, I don't anymore. Oh. oh, okay. So what do you do on the ship? Why are you here? That's a good question. I don't know if I'm going to be here any longer, so, uh, what do you, what do you do on here? Oh, um, I'm I'm a mechanic. My name's Tim. He puts his hand out. I shake Tim's hand. Hi, hi. How long have you been on the ship? I don't know how long have I been out. Oh, well, there was a big lizard guy and a couple other people who dropped you off on the bed last night. It's pretty late. I kind of just I haven't been sleeping well lately. I got like. A weird letter in my locker saying someone was threatening to kill me, so I haven't slept in days. <clears throat> it sounds like you need a cup of tea. Um, I grab him by the hand, because I'm, I'm also need support to get oh. to the other part of where okay. I'm going to make tea. I'm going to make chai tea. Okay, he's just going to roll something real quick. Yeah. That's not bad. Okay, so you, you you feel like you're leading him, but in reality you're leaning on him. Yeah. And uh, he takes you to wherever it is that you're kind of like stumbling directionally. Okay. Until you find like a little bit, uh, you go to the main mess hall. He's like, is this where you wanted to go? Yes, please. Can you oh. can you be a deer and put on the kettle? <laughs> and I'm going to sit down. 
because I'm probably not feeling great. Oh, uh, okay. There's like a little, uh, like, mm. like a self-serve, like a hot water station. Like there's the main kitchenette where there's the window where Chef Blue is like mixing or mixing stuff. And then there's um, you know, little stations throughout where you can, you know. So wait, is Chef Blue and... there? Oh yeah. You, oh, you, went to no. the, you went to the cafeteria. Okay. Were, yeah. you, were you trying to go to the cafeteria? I guess that, yeah, I guess that is. I completely mm-hmm. forgot where I was. <laughs> oh, what hangover. Happens? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he, he sits you down and uh, he starts putting on a, a pot of water. And uh, at this point, uh, Greg, oh, sorry, uh, yeah, Greg and Flinch, what are you guys doing this fine morning? It's, yeah, it's almost noon. Well, I guess. I guess first, Flinch is going to crawl out of whatever air duct he slept in. <laughs> there is an air duct that, that is yours, yeah. No mm-hmm. one's found you in this place yet. That's right. They better not come in. There's no hey. trespassing. So. Someone has found you there, but you were sleeping, so you didn't <laughs> know. It's all good. Um, I guess I go try to track down Grek. What are you doing? Uh, You find uh, Grek wandering through one of the halls, and you find him based on the sound of people going, Oh, God! And some screams and some. <laughs> I follow the trail. Yeah, Gre- Grek is not the best smelling creature on a normal day, but you know he has like after gravy glow. Oh it's god, not appealing. I'm a rat and I'm disgusted. You turn a, yeah. you turn, a cor- you turn a corner and you see Grek. He's standing there and a little shirt and vest, and he's holding what looks like some steaming cup of something or is another. Grek wearing pants? No. That's what I thought. <laughs> Is Greg wearing underwear? No. Oh, no! Not that you can tell. It's so filthy. No. Greg doesn't own Annoying underwear. Cloth? Like, you only need one You only need one layer. No. It looks like he got dressed, but just forgot pants. You just <laughs> the bottom half. Shirting it? He does just have shoes on. Shirt skirting it? He's got his boots on. Oh, Little okay. socks. One of them's sticking up at the boot, and the other one's not. Anyway, that's what the sounds oh, yeah. are coming from. He's just standing Greg. there. Drinking somebody looking kind of something. Greg, ah. you forgot your pants again, man. He just looks down. You forgot your pants. Looks up. And I thought it felt a little cold today. Well, let's let's go get you some pants. <laughs> it looks a little cold. We're on a mission today, and I'm gonna need your expertise. And I know you don't know what expertise means. Oh, I just need. You're good at scrounging for stuff, and I we're gonna need that. No, you don't know scrounging either. Just come with me. We gotta get your pants. <laughs> Stop drinking that. Let's go get some. Wait a minute. What did you put in the cup? I thought that was empty. What do you mean you thought it was empty? Why would I carry an empty cup? <laughs> Greg, let's go get you some pants. People are looking. They are. People uh, are always looking. I know. This fine, fine piece of. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your mother would be proud. Come on. Goblin snack. No, she really, would, she really wouldn't. Come on, come on, come on. I'm come way come. too clean for her. Uh, I mean, maybe a bath is not the question. A what? A bath. A what? A (sighs) bath. Just come with me. We'll get some (laughs) pants on because where I'm going, they're not going to let you in with no pants on. I'm not wearing pants. (laughs) (laughs) Laurel, what are you doing? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, um, I did... uh, Laurel kind of hung out, went to the gym in the morning, and now I'm going for lunch, so I'm headed toward the uh, the main mess hall. Yeah, the door is open, and you see that Cliptic is seated at the very end of one of the tables near the corner of the cafeteria, head in his hands, and there's a halfling that is uh, bringing him a, a hot cup of water. Clippy! I sit down and I clap, her, clap him on the back. That's so loud! Oh, yeah! Well done last night. You handled you handled your vibraxium, eh? Is that a real man was? now? Oh, you you had vibraxium. It's not a very good thing for a shearing to have, or anything smaller than a vest. No kidding. Oh, okay. And the, uh, did he try to make me tea? Well, I mean, I I don't really have any tea on me. I got hot water. I don't, I don't know where the tea leaves are. I go to, I take my hands and I'm patting myself down and I don't have my usual packet of oh. tea. So I, I just take it because it's a form of liquid. And I, as everybody who's been drunk knows the dry mouth thing, and I just drink the hot cup of water. I go get Roll. some. Roll. Oh. 
a fortitude saving throw. Oh, God. <laughs> Please. Oh, Jesus. Um, I go get some coffee. I come back with three cups. That would be 12 in total. Do you have any, like, weaknesses to heat? Where would that be? Didn't think so. I don't think I'd know. Nah, would be a no. racial sense. Considering yeah. I lived in the desert the first time you guys met me, I'm yeah. thinking no. Uh, you take the cup immediately and slam it back, and it is burning hot. Yeah. But you trudge through it without the energy to you know react to the heat burning your throat. Okay. And then Laurel sits down with a cup of coffee in front of you. Oh. Here. I oh. slurp back some my coffee, and then I go head into the this line for food. Much more sense. Uh, can you grab me some, uh, sugar? Yep. So, okay. you go in line, you go get food, there's Chef Blue looking all grumpy as usual. And he just puts What's up, his... Blue? Green? Green. It's green, it's right? green. Yeah, I Roll knew I had this charm right. check. <laughs> That's not charming. <laughs> no. Uh, that be diplomacy? Mm, I guess there's no or charm charisma? in this. charisma? Just roll it. Eh, roll me charisma for fun. Just straight charisma? Yeah, you're not trying to gain anything from him. That's the same as the pulse. I just want to see. No, you should trying to get me sugar. Four? <laughs> just as charismatic as I expected. Um, <laughs> Chef Blue has been like just dropping spoons of slop into people's trays. And as soon as you come up, he's just holding the spoon. And he's just staring at you like you literally broke something in his mind. I got your name right, though. Blat. Charmed. <laughs> See ya. Oh my god. I sit down. I did not bring sugar. I forgot. Laurel's nothing. <laughs> if- <laughs> <laughs> Laurel's nothing if not consistent. <laughs> That's true. Uh, Flinch and Grek, where are you guys heading with that needs um, pants? I would like Grek and Flinch to tell me about the pantsless escapades. Okay, so. Uh, okay, so we're just walking down the hallway. I guess sure. people are looking at us. And, uh, yeah, they tend to do that. Yeah. I'm like, okay, okay. Greg, where's your pants? Um. Um. Intelligence check. <laughs> oh, God. His intelligence is actually not bad. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's what he's intelligent about. 12 in total. I rolled an 11 and I have a plus one modifier. Oh. I mean, they might be an event. They could be under your bunk. On the meteorite. They also could very well have been left at the bar. It really depends. Just, um, give me one sec, okay? Just wait right here. You don't know what a second is. Wait here. I'm not waiting here. Where are you going? I'm going to go get my pants. Well, where are they? I'm just going to get some pants. Just wait here. Okay, okay. I'll give you five minutes. Don't growl at me. And uh, you just saw Grek gives you the cup that he was drinking from. Ugh. And uh, he disappears around the corner, and he comes back like 30 seconds later, and he has pants on. <laughs> <laughs> You've never seen these pants before? Oh, no. And they kind of fit him. They're a little long around the legs, but he tuck, he's tucking them into his boots as he comes back around. Who'd you steal those pants from? Nobody. Where'd you get these pants? They were on monitor pants. On monitor. Fair enough. Fair enough. We should go grab a quick snack, keep our fuel up, and I look in the cup. I just want, I just want Flinch to look <laughs> in the cup that's been handed to him. What's in this cup? Oh, oh, what's in this cup? <laughs> You're not really sure, but there's a foot sticking up out of it. What? A foot? How big of a foot? Like a- <laughs> just a little one. Just a little foot? Just like a Roll a medicine foot? check. <laughs> oh God. Is it like 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 a little or, or like like an insect foot? Oh, no, there's no, no. That with a someone. natural 20 plus seven <laughs> natural. 20. Yeah, it <laughs> um, it looks like some kind of, you know, there are different categories of rodent. <gasps> the, the less intelligent kinds that tend to be more of an infestation on vessels and prime pickings for omnivorous leaning towards carnivorous individuals. Would you eat small Rodents like mice. It was rats. already dead when I found them. Yep, they're really good. No, a lot of ginseng and stuff in there. There's no ginseng in there. <laughs> Who taught you that word? <laughs> God. Okay. Okay. Probably wait. Wait. Take. It was already dead. 
Like, where? Where was it? Was it around a trap of some sort? I don't think so. Where'd you find it? It was in the cup when I found it. So this isn't the same cup? What do you mean it's not the same cup? Oh, God. It's the cup I've been holding all morning. At this particular moment, from around the corner that Greg had left to go get the pants, you hear a rather gnomish voice. Oh, yeah. Where's my pants? Okay, Greg, let's go. <laughs> I don't even I don't even argue. <laughs> we just start. <laughs> run into the cafeteria. Grab a quick bite to eat. Get it now. All right. Oh while while we're walking, Greg quickly pulls like a grease pencil out of a pouch that was in his vest yeah. and starts writing his name on the inside of the pants. Just in yeah, case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't I'm not going to check the spelling. <laughs> It's not spelled correctly. No, no. It's beautiful. Just like a picture. It's of, beautiful cursive writing, just yeah. like the origami. Yeah, it's in there. Stick, stick figure o. over a goblin. Stick figure over a goblin. Just stick man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you guys go to the cafeteria and you sit on down just as uh, Laurel is is sitting there looking kind of dumbfounded with like Slop on a, on a tray and Cliptex holding his head in his hands. And there is this strange halfling that as you walk in, Greg looks at you with really large, wide eyes and fear and terror. This is time. You 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 spoke to him before, after leaving a message about someone wanting to kill him in his locker in uh, the engine room. <laughs> it's quite possible Greg does not remember this. Plead the fifth. And you came up to him and left a, uh, and whispered in his ear some very vague. Oh God, I we have uh, to kill some time. And it's a very vague <laughs> response about uh, how he's upset someone on this ship and they want him dead, and uh, he's never forgotten it ever since. So, who are you? And I try to eat. They kind of like look at the slop. I'm exquisitely. Um, um, uh, I'm going to go take a break before work now. I Aww. hope you feel better. Bye. Dude, are you okay? Oh, your friend of the beast day. Uh, that one. I'm gonna get a diplomacy check. So we're just walking up to the table. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Okay. Eleven. <laughs> She's so proud. <laughs> he, he he contemplates it. Um. Uh. You guys approach the table. Oh. I, oh God. Uh, uh, look at the gnome. Yeah, I know you. What? How's wait, it wait, going? Wait. Greg doesn't remember anybody. Who are you? But but my name. My name's Tim. I, I, Tim. I, I work. It's I work in the name. engineering bay. Dude, sorry. You have a loser name. What are you talking about? Yeah. I don't even remember. Your name is like. Oh, I'm scared. I'm gonna flinch. Oh, I don't know what that was. That was. That was. I was oh, trying to do like your accent. Lizard, lizard. I'm not very good at it. <laughs> oh, well, golden opportunity. How do you know? How are you guys friends? Greg, did you make a friend? We talked about this. It's um, be a great next step for you. I mean, friend. Um. You're Clippy's friend, right? Um. We met. Uh huh. Once. Mm hmm. Don't worry, though. I took care of your problem. Oh, what problem? Oh, God. The, the how one. Did, what did you do? I didn't. I didn't really. Just. Don't worry about it, okay? Don't. I'll get you to roll a diplomacy check. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> See oh God, I can goes. only imagine. Just roll it. Somebody bless this dice. <gasps> so. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's fun. <laughs> I do have a plus three on my diplomacy. Uh, what was the dice say? <laughs> One. <laughs> <laughs> the, I just want to make him feel better, <laughs> man. <laughs> For those of you listening, you can't see this, but our audio operators just sitting there shaking their head. Just (laughs) unbelievable. Um, Time, as far as you know him, or Tim, as far as Cliptic knows him, uncontrollably drops the, the mug and it shatters on the floor. There may be a bit of urine involved, and he turns and just runs away crying. Okay. Leaves cafeteria. Dude, what'd you do? Yeah, God. Greg. I didn't, I didn't you have to stop s- making small people piss themselves. I didn't Wait, do making something very he, specific. He does it all the time. What? Yeah. Um, Like on purpose? 
Yeah. I can't remember. Oh. I just, I don't take care of that later. What did you do? I didn't really do anything. Yeah, that means you did something. No, it doesn't. I didn't really do anything means you did something. What'd you do? Nothing. Just tell me what you did. What you did. You guys are making <laughs> so much noise. Stop! Oh, oh, how you doing? How you doing? Greg sticks out the cup that he's taken back. Would you like some ginseng? You almost throw up instantly. Yeah. Do I have to roll for that? <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> Roll me fortitude. Ah, uh, no, this just straight constitution for this one. Just straight constitution. Suit. Yeah, just straight constitution. Okay. Oh, 19 in total. You almost throw up, but it's okay because <laughs> you throw up in your mouth a little bit and you just swallow it again. Lovely. Also oh, dignified. Okay. Yeah, good. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well. Oh. What is that? It's, don't ask. Don't ask. It's ginseng. ginseng. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> Oh, is it? That is not ginseng. We've talked about what ginseng is. It's a. It's a. Let's, um, let's go grab some real food. It's the closest thing I could find. Let's go grab some real food, Greg. I'm gonna go up in line with them. And stop scaring little people. And I'll just. <laughs> I'll take care of that later. <laughs> I'll take what? care. I'll just. I'll, I'll take. Yeah. Let's just go, go in line food. with them. I'm going in line with them. Okay. What's on the menu today? <laughs> slop. So you go in line, oh, you go through, and uh, it's slop is dropped on every single person's plate. Mm -hmm. It's like a mixture of mashed potatoes and mashed green peas. It's kind of like a bit of both with some oatmeal mixed in. Oh, my favorite yeah. food. I, I go, uh, Blue, Chef Blue is serving. Yeah. Correct? Oh. Oh, hello. Hello, Chef. Um, I'm not feeling quite good today. Do you have any bread like, you know, a baguette? I could have for breakfast. Flinch's head just spins. Oh, well. I'll take one too. My baguettes have gone missing as of lately. Would you know anything about that? No. And then I'm just going to take my tray with my food and turn around and go back to Laurel. <laughs> when I'm off duty, I'm going to find you, little insect. And he's just cursing your name as you okay. walk away. Cool. Ah, so I look at Chef Blue. Ah, the case of the missing baguettes. Would you like to put us on the case? Greg, get over here. Who the heck are you? I'm Greg slides his way up the line, his nose as usual coming straight even. Ugh. Just sitting on the top of like... My name, <laughs> my name is Flinch. This is my compatriot, Greg. We're quite skilled at finding baguettes. Uh. uh well, uh, I mean, I, I can always... um. Uh, 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 how much does it charge? I, I, I'm not very fluid right now with 25% of the baguettes. Uh, wow, that's not bad. All right, if you find baguettes, you bring them here and you can have some of the baguettes. Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds good. Okay, all right, fantastic. Here's your slop. Yeah. Oh, you know. See, Greg? See, Greg? You put pants on, we get work. You know, I know that our backgrounds explain how we got to the place that we are now, but sometimes I really wonder how we really did get to the point where I'm a pilot and he's a mechanic. <laughs> the adventures of, uh, the, like I said, the pantless ex escapades. We'll explore this one day. Yeah. Well, right. we'll go sit at the table. So morning, you know, morning goes through pretty, pretty relatively uneventfully. Um, this is the last day that the heap is uh, in dry dock on, uh, on the station. Is there anything you guys would like to do before the ship uh, departs. Yes. See a doctor. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna. Uh, Flinch is gonna take Grek, and I'm gonna try because we're on the. You're on the heap. We're on the heap. Um, and I want to try to find the uh, heap's workshop. Okay. I'm assuming it has one. Uh, it's. So BK1 is the name of the android that works in the uh, the quad bay. Uh, he's got a workshop there that would serve the needs of what you're looking for, but uh, it is his workshop. Oh, so it, doesn't, it, have doesn't, to, it doesn't have a... It it does, but so the, the crew here is employed, so there is a workshop, but it's not like a communal workshop. It is in the sense that you can provide service, you can ask for services, and he will charge you. But if you want to use his workbench, it may take some, I don't know, persuading or diplomatic action. Okay, so that's gonna fail. It's not even worth trying. <laughs> yeah, Greg and Flinch uh, gonna make a diplomacy you check. You can try. Try, try it. You, you got into the yes. crypt last time. 
Yeah, okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um, so I go there. Um, oh. Also, while I'm walking there, uh, Flinch is trying to remember on all the time he spent on the ship. Um, is there, like, junk piles and stuff that they collect that get here that needs to be gone through? It All of that goes through uh, for, through BK1. Uh, it's, We're leaving this organization. Uh, <laughs> you can try and see if there's back. any of the of the other three hip, hiplets that have Heaplets? stuff on it that they have not dropped off, but uh, usually everybody gets their stuff to BK and then he gives them cash for it. Oh, so BK is like kingpin. He's the kingpin. He's of the all resource the, manager. He's the resource manager. We need to start collecting our own junk. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Okay, so I'll take uh, uh, Grek and go up to uh, BK1. Uh, hello. Hey, uh, I heard you got a workshop. Yeah, you Is, need something? Yeah, I was going to try to build something. What are you looking to build? Uh, like patchwork clothes. You know, like, uh, stuff to protect my precious flesh. <laughs> so, uh, armor. Yeah, 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 yeah. I All guess right. you could call it that. You got the materials for it? No, no. I was hoping that there was somewhere I could scrounge stuff up. Oh, well, what kind of stuff are you looking for? That's stuff to build, you know, like, armor. <laughs> what kind of armor are you looking to build? Oh, uh, no, just basic, uh, uh freebooter stuff. Free booters stuff. Just, just that free booter, basic armor, yeah. So like some, uh, some second skin or some. Uh, no, I, I'd like to just build my own free booter, stuff. eh? Just okay. build some stuff. All right. Well, I just roll up for the sake of you know figuring out how I want the conversation to go. Diplomacy, please. Yeah. Uh, sixteen. Yeah. That's what I mean. Okay. Um, he kind of sits there and, like, taps his foot a bit. He goes, well, I mean, I don't personally myself have any free boot or armor, but, uh, I just need I've got parts. a lot of cataloging. If you're cool with sorting a couple of pieces over there, uh, I'm not really going to be too busy in the shop today. Um, I'll tell you what, you can borrow $150, 150 credits worth of equipment, and then I'll let you back there and put it together yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah that sounds good. Of course, yeah, if you break anything, I'm going to have to charge you for all the equipment you broke. Well, yeah. And if you do a real good job, I might be asking to help me with other things. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty good at building stuff. Oh, all right. Yeah, but I mean, it's been a little while. Greg's really good at scrounging. Well, yeah. Well, like I said, 150 credits, and I'll let you dig for whatever you need to make a free booter. Sure. Yeah, sure. All right. Sounds good to me. Do you hawk over the 150? Yeah, I'll pay him. Yep, so 150 credits. You can go in, and uh, with that, I'll get you to roll a uh, investigation check. Yeah, I, I have an ability called Scrounger. I believe the goblin also has a scrounging ability as well. Okay, doesn't goblins get that as an innate thing? Anyway, space goblins are different. So how does uh, Scrounger so. work? Yeah. I think it's more so yours. Yeah, it has to do with my smuggler thingy. Oh, wait, let's just try to roll. What is it? Investigation? Yeah. No or perception. Thing. Perception. 26. Good God. <laughs> um, it takes you like five, ten minutes. And yeah. You're like, all right, this, this, this uh, put here with that and this and that. Oh, look, there's even like a, like a, like a base underlayer suit you can attach it all to. Sure enough, you've got all the materials that you need to make free booter armor. It's mm -hmm. now simply a matter of spending time at the workshop and uh, rolling. Uh, yeah. Craft to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So, roll me a craft check. No, it's engineering. Engineering for to make armor. Armor, weapons, and all technological advices is engineering. Roll it. Because there isn't a craft. Oh, that sucks. I've only got eighteen. Ooh. Oh. Wow. All right. <laughs> yeah. It I, takes you a couple hours, yeah. but um, by the time you know you're getting into like early evening. Uh, by the time we're getting close to, to releasing Doc from from the station, from the heap itself, you've got yourself a set of freebooter armor that you want this to fit you, correct? Correct. Yep, you got some freebooter armor that'll fit you. Uh, gives you yeah. plus two. Oh, you got the stats there? Okay, so there you yeah. go. Basic freebooter armor. There you go. Yeah. 
I like I like it cool. I want it to be uh, sort of just all gray and blackish. I am the knight. Yes. Yeah. I like right. to rattle the cages. Oh my god. <laughs> that's, that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. What are you doing through all of this flinch? I know uh, we were looking for baguettes. Are you looking for baguettes? I guess I'm looking for baguettes in a workshop. They could be here. Perception check. There's no baguettes. <laughs> <laughs> I have a plus 10 on my perception. Okay. I rolled a two. <laughs> There's no big 12. <laughs> the entire time that you're constructing this armor, Flinch, you just hear... <laughs> as uh, Grek keeps throwing random pieces of scrap behind his head, digging into random piles, making new piles as he goes and separates the old piles. And... At one point, you look over and he's used his goblin tinker ability. You look over and he's holding what looks to be this large, weirdly constructed gun. And then as you're looking, it just falls apart to the floor. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I knew I needed that one extra rubber band. Okay, Greg, we need to find somebody who can cast... Well, or use, you know, that uh, magic y stuff. But uh, to find baguettes? Yes. <laughs> Once it's done, we're gonna go search Flinch. for the baguettes. Flinch. If I don't have baguettes by this time tomorrow. What? What are you gonna do? Take your pants off again? I'm gonna take these pants off, and I'm gonna leave them in your bunk. Screwed up face. I just want to build it, and then I'm going to go try to track down baguettes. And the first yeah. person I'm going to go check with is Clippy. <laughs> <laughs> the investigation begins. <laughs> I'm on my way to a doctor. <laughs> In the station itself or on the meteor? Uh, on the, or on the uh, heap? On the heap. Okay. There's got to be a doctor somewhere. <laughs> yeah, to you'd think. I'd hope. <laughs> Uh, Aren't you a doctor? <laughs> yeah, that's the ironic part of this whole conversation. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> All right. I had a plus 12 to my engineering. I have a plus 13. Oh. Oh. I have no double digits. Dirt. Do we have a few? <laughs> I'm a skill. I'm a skill. Yeah, it's the same thing. Um, the operative is also a school junkie. All right, so you go on into the uh, the med bay, and there's only like one or two other people there, human, android, all getting checked up. <laughs> uh, there is, however, a uh, a very short individual with a tail and a white lab coat that they're wearing, and there seems to be a Yosoki that's walking around with a little clipboard, pitter-pattering around the lab with a pair of glasses on, and he looks up and he goes, Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Um, I don't feel right. Oh, well, um, please, take a seat. I sit down. Cool. And he, uh, he, he lifts himself up with his tail up to a stool, and as he's, like, reading uh, his clipboard, and uh, he licks his finger to move the papers over, his tail begins grabbing other tools, like a stethoscope, to start peering into your ear, and he starts asking all manners of really rapid-fire questions, like your name, your medical history, and any histories of, of heart disease in your family, uh, allergies, any food issues, cramping, like, just a whole bunch of questions, and rapid-fire, and you deliver your yeses and nos, and until right. uh, finally he goes, puts everything around, and you're just like blinded by a couple of lights at one point, and he looks at you and goes, You're poisoned? Yes. Are you, are, are you looking for me to cure your poison? If you could. Oh. Oh, why didn't you say so? And he kind of like jumps over to a couple of vials on the counter. You see that like... A lot of the place is actually really clean, except for anything that this doctor touches, it becomes a mess. And soon after he leaves it, a little uh, like automated droid goes and cleans up behind him everywhere he goes. Oh. And uh, he comes back with a couple of vials and the syringe, and he goes, "All right, so um, I'm going to uh, stick you with this. It won't hurt. Uh, it, it won't hurt a bit. Uh, it hurts a little bit. Okay. As he sticks you in the arm with this thing. It's a rather <gasps> large needle. <laughs> oh, don't no, don't worry, don't worry. All right." And, um, excellent. Now, he grabs a case of uh, pills and he pops a couple in your hand. He goes, now, now take these right now and um, I'll give you this little, this little sealed packet of two more and take those in, 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 in four hours and uh, you'll be right as rain tomorrow morning. 
Oh, that's 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 lovely. Thank yes. you. Uh, you're, very, you're very welcome. I go to and shake his hand. He, he shakes your hand. Oh, well, it's very nice of you. Thank you very uh, very much. A uh, clip tick, I believe your record says. Yes. Uh, yes. Ah, perfect. All right. Um, is there anything else I can do for you today? No. Tweaks his nose a little bit like a mouse. But no, no, I'm I'm fine. I I think. Thank you. Thank you. No, you're, you're very welcome. Give me one sec. He thinks your mental state is perfectly fine. He goes, oh yes, you must be having a lovely day. Oh well, well thank you very much. I, I look. I, I mean, it sounds very terrible for me to say my profession, but uh, I hope to see you again soon. <laughs> I, I just walk away clutching these pills like they're my last saving grace of this hangover. He's and looking just at his clipboard like, and waving his, with his tail at you yep. as he walks away. Yep, and I uh, just walk away as well. All right. Laurel, what are you doing for the evening while well, uh, this one goes to the med lab and these two go and search for baguettes and metal? Mm, I'm probably going to go uh, go to the gym, see, I can't remember what his name is, see if I can find that dwarf that I fought last time. Ten minute mark. But uh, yeah, no, I'm not gonna go shopping because I know we have a guy in our hold who's worth money. I'm gonna wait till afterwards. Yeah, gonna so, what now? Go shopping. Ah, I'm gonna wait till after we get paid. To so, go and uh, I'm just gonna you... hang out on the heap, make a general nuisance of myself, and then go go to the gym. Do I right. see if there's an cool fight? You, do I remember? If you told me what the plan was about the captain, no, you I never, yet. You, yeah, I nope, never told you. Have you. No idea I what have happened. no idea. You okay. were either There's drunk no or hungover every time I've seen you. Right. Okay. It's true. All right. Uh, we're approaching the end of the day, and uh, this, the heap is signing off for its its last couple of crew members are climbing climbing back aboard as they're about to disembark. Um, anything anyone wishes to do prior to the final departure of uh, the heap? Try to find baguettes. Perception checks, please. Do I see you guys while I'm kind of wandering around the ship at all? Oh. <laughs> hmm. Uh. Can, you... I was gonna say, can. What's your plus on perception, Greg? That's not flinch asking. I'm just curious. Plus ten. Plus ten. I am going to use an aid another action, and attempt to help Greg with her role. Huh. Okay. So it's wrong. This is these aren't. So these aren't I should boobs. I should have did that. Boobs. But so you get an extra plus two to your skill check. So it's plus twelve now because we're working together. That makes sense. Let me see if I can percept anything. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Roll two on the dice. So fifteen. So 15. fourteen. Fourteen. Math. So fourteen. <laughs> The two of you... I'm it, it, 18 to 8. <laughs> yeah. Should have gone with that. Uh, so, this in your pile me. of digging through scrap, you do find a stick with a little ring on the top of it that uh, has no actual glass in it, but looks like a magnifying glass. And the two of you are Sherlock Holmesing it across the entire station. Uh, Laurel, at some point, you do see the two of them pitter-pattering around, looking at the floor between their feet with this, this circular device in front of their eyes, and... As they look up and look around, you notice there is no glass in there. They're just using it to look through, and they're running around. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Looking for the lost baguettes. I thought you ate them. Did I? Yeah, some of them. What did they do? Oh, God. You, uh... Those were the baguette baguettes we ate? I just assumed he made new ones. Oh. Who stole them? Has he been... Is Was that me again? Giving people stale baguettes? Oh, I mean, well, I mean, it's the perfect crime. Wait You'll a never second. think we stole them. We're helping them look for them. Wait, wait, That's wait. That's disgusting. Who, who eats and sells stale baguettes? You, wait, no. Well, what? No. Not, oh. not you ginseng drinking, but... Oh, uh. <laughs> okay, so wait a second. <laughs> You're looking for new baguettes? Yeah. They were yours? Well, I don't know if they're new ones, but any baguettes we find, we get 25% of the sweet baguette. Where where are these baguettes from? I don't know. Blue said somebody stole them, but apparently they're the ones we stole and ate. Okay, wait. So if someone's stealing something from Blue... Yeah. Then you shouldn't you look for clues in the kitchen? Yeah. That's where they'd start, right? They don't like us in the kitchen, though. Well, I mean, it's, we it's like eating now, right? People lose their appetites. 
Shine does the kitchen close. Just we'll, we'll go there after they close. Where's Clippy? I don't know. The clips are, I just want to ask for fun. Laurel, do you start going down the rabbit hole of thinking of different things that could help them in their investigation? Yes. Clip tick. <laughs> it's nearing the end of the day and the heap is departing. It's it's uh, un, unbanged from uh, the space station. Okay. You go to the meteor. You're not sure what compels you. <clears throat> You're not sure what compels you to do this. You go to the, the heap. You know that meme where Charlie Day has red yarn strewn across this room, pins to papers throughout the area? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and he's got his hand up against the wall, black bags under his eyes going, okay, and so the final answer is... Yes, that's right. You go into the main mess hall of the meteor, <laughs> where you now have tables and chairs. Yeah. The tables are turned over to make extra wall space as the walls are covered in napkin covered, or in napkin written on drawings and words with wire connecting all of them. And the three of them are trying to figure out where the baguettes are. So guys, look, you ate some of the baguettes, but someone else is stealing from Chef Blue. And no one other than you guys is crazy enough to steal from Chef Blue for no good reason. So they got to have a reason to no, steal from Chef Blue. That is true. Oh, uh, cut. and do I notice? Okay, Cliptic's just, you're just standing there? What are you going to do, Cliptic? If you're doing nothing, uh, no. I'm going to continue. Okay, I'm so sorry. All right, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to look at all the strings, and I'm already, I'm assuming I'm feeling a little bit better from the whole yeah, you're endurance. Feeling okay, Man. so I, <laughs> I'm going to go into, just pass them very, very silently, go into my room, and come back with an armful of baguettes. I want you to roll a stealth check, and the other three of you roll perception checks. All right, everyone, but... Lindsay, tell me your scores. Greg has 14, because I rolled a four on the dice again. 26. Six. I'm I into love, this, man. Love, I'm like writing things on the napkin. And, and what did you get uh, for your stealth. stealth check? For stealth? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, it's this thing. Um, 17. So the only so as you stand there watching these guys in their conspiracy theory ways, as you turn to leave, Flinch notices you before you go to your room, like leaving the doorway of the of the mess hall that they're in. Okay. Hey, hey, where are you going? What? Just just to my room to rest. To rest. Oh well. Oh oh. Okay. Um. While you're walking around, though, if you can find anybody who has any like. You know, I know my magic. I know I thought it was make believe too, but anyone who has magic or can make stuff appear out of nothing or read people's minds or anything like that, Are you if trying? you can bring it to me, maybe we can use their their mental abilities to help figure this out. You want to try and read people's minds to see if they know where the baguettes are. Yeah, but we we can't do it on Greg though. You, you don't want to steer into the abyss. I negate the, you are grabbing you the baguettes from my room, room and I'm going to offer help. <laughs> Greg, Greg, <laughs> Greg is... Uh, Tick just kind of shrugs. Oh, fuck it. Greg's <laughs> lying on the floor on his back and he's smoking what looks to be a cigarette. <laughs> and he puts... Takes a long draw. <sighs> I read someone's mind once. You can read? It was dark. Somehow, as Greg says this, the lighting in the room gets dimmer as if it was like a film noir, and then everything's back to normal. No. No, 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 Clippy, I mean, seriously, somebody with, you know, magical abilities. That would be me. Yeah, yeah, that's cool, that's cool. Uh, no, I mean, you know. I'm going to use tele <laughs> telepathy. <Wait. laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> Oh, I'm looking forward. Flitch doesn't believe you can do anything. <laughs> I'm technically, wait, technically, Cliptic, no. you're always speaking in telepathy to him. I am. Oh, wait, what? You're always speaking in telepathy. Oh. Clip, yeah, you're you can't vocabulize things well, outside to, of to, to enhance awesome. the the whole because he doesn't believe me regardless. Yep. I'm going to use psychokinetic hand, and I'm going to grab some light piece of furniture and toss it at him. A chair? That's yeah, let's go with that. Chair. Let's do that. Yes. Probably. That's that probably could have been Greg even. I'm, I'm, I'm 25 feet away from him. You're right? not trying so to hit him with yeah. it, right? Just throwing it? Oh, no, I'm going to hit him. 
Okay, okay roll for it. Yeah, it's fine. What's your uh, what's your KAC? Not high. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, now I forgot how to do this. So, so I rolled a fifteen on the dice. She hit me. <laughs> I did. I have a sixteen. She guaranteed yeah, to she have a plus one. one. Yeah, guaranteed. So uh, as. <laughs> So, yeah, we need someone that can, uh, you know, use magic. Really? Cliptic just stares with a, with a gesture, with a flick of the wrist. A chair comes hurtling across the room at you, Flinch. And uh, you are struck in the chest by this chair. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Do it's D6 damage. Do you believe me now? Well, you oh. got to roll for damage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're hurting him. <laughs> one. <laughs> You're yeah, lucky. One point of stamina damage. Yeah. Immediately. Flinch's reaction, oh, and looks over from where the chair came from. Oh, we have an assassin on board, <gasps> dude. <laughs> oh man, did you see that chair? Who cares? I mean, there's about nobody you? in here with any magical ability whatsoever. Who cares it's... enough about you to kill you? I Someone who also has it out for blue. And it's true, they know I fear chairs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Greg's still much. lying on the floor. Takes another long drag of a cigarette. <laughs> Clip, take, take a point of stamina damage. Why? I'm treating it as psychic damage. This is hurting your calm. This is okay. I'm sorry. just making a. I'm making a. You know. Yeah, yeah. A call. Assassins. What am I? What is Bring happening? You're taking one point of psychic damage for the pain this is causing you because I can't take it to myself. Clippy, Clippy, you, you need know. to find out who doesn't like blue and also <laughs> doesn't like flinch. Oh God, it could be endless. It could be an endless list. Oh my God. An end list. Oh. oh. Well, oh, you know what we really while do they're need? doing this, we Greg need... is actually going to get up and he's going to leave and go to the engineering bay. <laughs> of yeah. the heap? Yeah. I'm going to. We need some energy. We need some quick energy. You know, we need food. This is going to take all night. Do we miss dinner? Oh, we probably did. Has oh. anyone got any food? As that question is posed, <laughs> Greg has left the meteor and you've gone to the engine bay of the heap. What are you looking for? <laughs> Looking for Tim to have time, time. Yes, Tim. his name is spelled T Y M. Yeah, no, uh, I'm looking for his yeah. his locker. <laughs> you find his lock. You remember where his locker is, and yeah, sure enough, there there there's his locker. So I'm gonna pull out one of the multiple napkins I keep in my vest at all times. The, the couple come out at the same time. They're kind of stuck together. Okay, that's fine. And uh, and my little grease pen, and I'm just gonna write a note that says. No, you no longer have to fear. The problem has been handled. You are loved by your colleagues. But he, colleagues is spelled C O L E E G Z. I'm sure that it's all spelled wrong. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's all spelled wrong. I will yeah. kill you and your entire family. <laughs> and then fold yeah. it up and I'm going to stuff it inside the locker. <laughs> oh, my God. I want you, just, just for the sake of, 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 RPing the results. Mm-hmm. Can you please roll a diplomacy check? A diplomacy? Yep. <laughs> oh no. Man, I, I'm going to take my rings off because honestly, I haven't rolled anything. Yeah, the rings. Uh, the wrong. majority of my yep. rolls have been below 10. It has nothing to do with the RPG powers that. Uh, you. <laughs> I told rolled you. a three on the dice, so I have six total. <laughs> so you insert this, this message into his locker in hopes of a better future for Tim the Halfling. Yes. Or time the yes. Halfling, as far as you're aware of him. Mm-hmm. And you leave. Or do you stay? No, I leave. And you leave. Ever I just, hopeful for I the future. I just step back and I take one last drag from the cigarette that I still have, which I probably shouldn't be smoking in the engineering bay. It's literally just one of your napkins. Okay. And uh, I'm just going to live on time. Live on. <laughs> what is this? Oh, I really shouldn't be smoking this thing. Really shouldn't. Don't smoke, kids. Don't smoke. <laughs> Drugs are bad. Don't smoke. <laughs> no. With that, as you guys are getting deep into your discussion, figuring out where the, the mystery of the baguettes. We need a quick energy to work through the night. Does anyone have any food? Thank you for listening to this Rescue Studios production. Next episode of Spacers will air Tuesday, October 29th. Until then, Tuesday, October 22nd is the next episode of The Call, our Call of Cthulhu actual playcast GM'd by Derek Snow. The game system used today was the Starfinder game system by Paizo. Music, sound effects, and ambient tracks in this episode licensed by Video Copilot, Triune Films, and Sirenscape. 
You can find all of Twisted Gears' podcasts on YouTube, Google Play, Apple Music, and Spotify. Please like and follow the Twisted Gear Studios' Facebook page, and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at The Twisted Gear. Your players this evening were Janessa Coles, Lindsay Delansky, Elizabeth Wells, and Derek Snow. Your audio operator tonight was Rob Hickey, and I was your host and GM, Zach Barrett. If you happen to be in the Fort Murray area, you can find me at Tavern on Main every Monday at 7.30pm for trivia. Have a good night, everyone, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>